And joining us now here on In the Circle, he's the head coach at Virginia Tech, fresh off the run of the, the Super Regionals in 2021. And of course, high expectations here in 2022. We speak of Pete DeMore, who joins us. Uh, coach, how you doing? I'm good, Eric. Good to see you again. Really an exciting time for the program. Let's kind of look back last year. I was there following you, you know, when you won the regional in Tempe and you got within a win in Los Angeles of getting to the Women's College World Series. This, you know, during the summer, when you look back at last season, and, and we've talked about taking that those next steps, what, what do you think about when you think back to 2021 and being that close to the World Series and making that next step uh, in this program? Yeah, I look back on 21, and uh, it was kind of a, an up and down year for us. Um, but we peaked at the end and that's what every coach wants to see. Um, uh, we kind of have a philosophy here of, of not peaking at the end, but you're one of the teams that falls off at the end, the last, <laughs> you know? So, um, we, we did a good job of that. Uh, but looking back on last year, um, you know, there were some games here or there that we lost during the regular season that put us in a position not to host. And so, um, I don't know if the New York Yankees could go to UCLA and beat them in a three game series. It's just, it's just a monumental task. And so going into this year, you know, a couple of our, our, our key aspects was um, what can we do to put us in a position to host? And that doesn't mean we're going to, but uh, is there any way that we could um, enhance our schedule or talent or any of those things to get us to, be in a position to host regionals and supers uh, if we're fortunate enough to get that far. And um, I think we've done that. So, you know, so far this year. I remember we talked, you told me, you know, when you got to the regional final in Lexington in 19, that was an, a learning experience and that you, that helped you in Tempe. What mm -hmm. the experience from Los Angeles, do you want your players to take that you think will take, they'll help them this year? Well, one of the positive things uh, about last year and in Lexington we have a lot of the same players on our team still. So we got to Lexington and we weren't really supposed to, uh, we weren't picked to be there at the beginning of the year, you know? So we had a great year in 19. Uh, we get to the regionals, um, had a good game against, I think, Illinois. And once we got to Kentucky, it was like, uh-oh, lights are on now. And it was just a new feeling for us. Um, not having those expectations to get that far and kind of hit a wall, I thought. Um, so moving forward, our goal was to, to play a little bit more relaxed in regionals uh, if we were fortunate enough to get there again. So that's what we did last year. I didn't see the same panic in Tempe that I saw in Lexington. Um, so we got to UCLA and we had um, kind of a, a fighter's mentality going into game one. And the same feeling I felt in Lexington, I felt game two of Super Regionals. It was almost like the expectations are here and, oh, my goodness, um, you know, are we going to do this? We're one game away. So it's almost too much forward thinking instead of just, uh, you know, every coach says it playing in the moment. But um, I don't think we did that well. The, 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 our eyes got big. And, and that's not what you need against UCLA or an Oklahoma or Florida State. It, you, you, your eyes can't get too big, you know, and that's uh, – We've been there now. We felt that. And uh, our goal now is to, you know, when you get to postseason, just try to be relaxed as much as you can. I know you told me when you took over the program, you don't look at, you know, you don't think of, hey, I want to be here in a certain spot by a certain year that you, you you take it game by, you know, day by day and year by year. That being said, considering the short time you've been there, you have to be pleased where the program is at, considering just the short period of time that you've been there. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, We've improved every year and, um, you know, it's, I, I guess my philosophy is I've, I've been, um, you know, lucky enough to go to regionals almost every year that I've coached. And so um, I know somewhat what it takes. It's just not uh, bluster. You can't just talk about it. And there's certain things you have to do, certain mentalities. And uh, when I first got here, I mean, I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't think we'd make regionals, but I can't tell my team that, you know, it's just, you know, this is the steps that you have to do to get to regionals, but um, that's, that's, it's not boastful or anything. It's, it's really what I, what I'm used to, you know, I'm mean, going to postseason. It's not, it's not, let's, you know, let it, you know, get a cake and, and have fun and, and celebrate going to regionals. Now you expect to go there. So um, to get there in year four, uh, 
if you did in year one, you should be able to get there two, three, and four, you know? So once we got there the first year, I, I thought we'd go to regionals, but you just never know. You don't know what you're inheriting or how the kids will respond to you or any of those kind of things. So once we made it the first year, we kind of have a, a recipe to, to, to put ourselves in a position to do it again. Does it mean you're going to do it every year? No, but um, it's, it's worked out so far. Was there a moment where you felt like, wow, the player, you know, the players have bought in this, this is going to turn around quick. You know, this is going to be a quicker turnaround than even I thought. Like there, there was, there was that transitional period, right? You inherit absurd players. They got to buy in, you, you know, sure. you got to learn each other. Was there a moment in time where you like, okay, this is, this is clicking. Uh, we, we played a team in, in, uh, in the fall and um, my first year and that team had beat Virginia tech before I got here and we beat them pretty soundly in that fall game. And um, that was kind of, okay, this is what it's supposed to be like, you know? So um, nothing against that program or team. It's a good program and team, but um, just felt like, you know, the kids saw, had a taste of what they were, their potential was. And um, that's, that sticks out in my mind. Of course, it helps when you have a, a great arm like Keely Richard. Uh, what a year. She had 29 wins, 138 ERA. Recently, she got named as one of the 45 invitees to the USA Trials. Just talk about Keely and what you've seen in the growth from her. Right. I mean, the thing with Keely is we had, we had two, pretty, two pretty good pitchers my first year, and um, Keely kind of got overshadowed that first year. And, and you look at her stats, and there were nothing to shake a stick at. They were I – mean, towards the end of the year, she was getting the ball a lot. So um, she's never satisfied with um, her performance. Uh, she never gets too high or too low. She's a good teammate. Um, the players really like playing behind her. Um, the thing that we're, we're lucky is, is she had the faith in the coaching staff to come back her extra year. And so I'm thankful for that. I mean, she could have opened up her nail salon and uh, been doing nails right now, but she, she decided to come back and, um, you know, I'm thankful for it. Our team was thankful for it, but uh, she's always been one of those kids that, that soaks in everything that Doug says, you know, and, and she likes uh, the one-on-one -on -one attention that he gives her. He gives that to every one of our pitchers, but um, she just really, really clicks with him. And, and if you click with Doug, you're going to get better. So um, yeah, I'm just proud of her. Um, she'll, she'll represent us well wherever the tryouts are at, at whether it's Florida or Vero California. beach, Florida. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she'll do a good job. She'll represent us well and, and she'll, she'll play hard down there. You mentioned last year that there was a point where she became a pitcher. She was a thrower at times, but that she learned to be a pitcher. Just talk yeah. about that, na that navigation. I mean, the difference between a thrower and a pitcher. Yeah. I mean, I, her first year, she, she lived off a rise and it's a good rise. Um, but she wasn't satisfied with just having one pitch. So if you were to ask me last year, you know, would she be comfortable throwing a drop ball? Yeah. So you can't sit on one pitch with her. You know, some of these kids are mostly drop, mostly rise, and it's mostly, you know, the number two pitch is okay, but she's got some days three plus pitches. And so when you can do that, it's good luck on sitting on something. And it's just hard to hit. So um, she's done a good job of, <clears throat> you know, having tight spin on her change. And, and now she's spinning her drop better than she did last year. So a hitter, it, it's, it's hard to prepare for her. Talk about the rest of the staff, because obviously Keely will get a lot of the attention, but uh, you have arms behind her that will help her as well, especially when you contend in the ACC with such, so many great arms in the ACC. Yeah. You need multiple arms. So talk about the rest of the staff and how they've looked this fall. Yeah, I mean, um, Mackenzie Osborne, Ozzy's come back. She had some really good games last year at times. Um, she, I think she threw really well against Florida State and Clemson and uh, I think Duke. Um, so she she had her moments last year as a freshman. She's throwing really well right now, mid-60s, spinning it up and down, good change up. Uh, she's been really impressive. Ivy's throwing um, – she's, she's throwing well too. I mean, she, she's the hardest thrower in our staff. She throws – uh, 69, 71, um, good drop ball change ups coming. Um, but she lives at the knees and she's throwing at the knees. It's hard to get three hits in a row off her, you know, three singles and score a run. So both those kids are, are better than they were last year. And, um, they had decent freshman years. They had freshman years, you know what I mean? Um, they weren't, they weren't great. They weren't terrible. They were just freshmen getting your feet wet. Um, so those two have, uh, have really improved. Uh, Molly Jacobson's still around. She's, as steady as they come. I mean, certain days we can't hit her. 
um, she's just steady, you know, you put her, put her out there and you know what you're getting strikes and, um, and she's not going to beat herself. Um, the newcomer we have is Emma Lemley. Um, I'm really excited to see her throw this year. Uh, for my money, she's one of the best 21 pitchers in the country. Um, you know, she was, she was throwing some games last, last summer against some really plus travel teams and striking out 15, 16, 17 a game. Um, I think at one point this year in the, in the, our fall games and granted it's D2, but um, I think she struck out 45 or 47. So uh, she's got, she's got the mentality of um, give me the ball and, and, you know, get out of the way. And so Keely's got some help this year, which is um, it helps me sleep at night when my son's <laughs> crying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, right. You got a lot of reasons there. Uh, when you look at the rest of your staff of behind Keely, because I've yep. seen some staff, some coaches, want to use the baseball model maybe have set roles some just kind of say hey let's see who's develops as the hot hand or whatever what's your philosophy as far as the staff is concerned behind Keeley? do you want to have set roles or do you want to just see how it plays out and maybe write a hot hand and see how it uh, who develops well i don't think it's i don't think it's productive to have a set rotation right now um a lot of a lot of a college coach or at least my philosophy is uh this next month that we don't see the kids month and a half will tell a lot, you know, cause we don't have our eyes on them and we can't check on them for NCAA compliance reasons. So uh, we'll see when they come back, they're going to have a lot of live at bats. And um, once that happens, we'll go, I, I'm, I'm kind of a hot hand kind of guy, you know, who's, who's throwing well and um, you know, who's rolling. So we'll see when they come back in January, what's what, what develops, but um I think it's going to be it's going to be good for our program. Offensively, last year you hit 297, 60 homers. Kelsey Bennett, thir- 314 average, 13 homers, 42 RBIs among your leaders. Kelsey Brown, 384, no homers, 20 RBIs. Uh, Bailey, 309, eight homers, 42 RBIs. Just talk about your offense, and obviously Kelsey Bennett, who had big hits a time after time. It seemed like every postseason game. Yeah, uh, if you were to ask me this summer. Um, our offense was the most disappointing thing about our season last year. I just thought we were just uh, too inconsistent. And, um, you know, we had a good run at the end. But like I said, I mean, if we had a good run in the middle of the year, we, you know, would have probably probably not been in UCLA. So um, we had a good year. Don't get me wrong, 297 and 60 bombs is not a bad year. But for us, if you would have told me that in the fall, because we absolutely crushed the ball in the fall, you know, I would, I would have thought 330 and 100 home runs, you know. So um, I tweaked the offense a little bit in our philosophy uh, these last couple weeks. We're starting to swing the bat, reminiscent of my first year here. Um, you just, let's just go swing hard and see what happens and um, seeing a lot of positives. Because at the very least, hopefully we would hit 297 and 60 bombs again. If that's your floor, that's pretty good. So let's – see if we can improve that. And um, so we've really hit home hard uh, or hit hard the um, mobility piece of our players. Uh, can we move better? Can we move faster? Can we be more healthy? Um, it's starting to pay off. I don't know that it's going to have off the charts numbers, but uh, we're staying out of the training room more. So that's positive. Uh, not a lot of injuries, knock on wood. Um, kids feel good and they feel good. They play good and we'll see what happens. But the last two and a half weeks of practice, we've just been, uh, turning the machines on. We have a hit tracks and we just, how far can you hit the ball? And so, uh, and we have some kids that are hitting balls over three twenty plus consistently. And it's, uh, you know, it's BP and it's, and it's, it's off the machine, but it, it's pretty impressive. You know, my, my 41 year old self can't do that anymore. <laughs> so uh, I don't know that I ever could, but um, you know, it's, if our offense can hit like we have the past couple, couple weeks, we'll be a handful. And you have an experienced group for another year coming back is the a core of that. That has to help. I'm sure as well as the offense. It's a big deal. Cause yeah, I, I'm not, I don't have to teach them things, you know, it, it's, and I'm, I'm starting to get out of the whole, you know, mechanical teaching things anyway, just go out and do it. And uh the kids get my personality. They know what's expected of them. And so it's not a lot of teaching. Uh, we have some really talented freshmen um, and the upperclassmen are taking them under their wing and, and showing them what they need to be doing. So 
I, it's not hands off by any means what I'm doing, but uh, I like how the returners are taking the reins and, um, and, and running with them. Who's the leaders uh, of this group? It, you know, I remember last year you said Kelsey Bennett was one of your leaders. Uh, talk about the leadership this year. Is it already established? Is it something that evolves uh, and, and offensively in particular? Uh, I think we, I, I don't know that I could put my finger on one player that's a leader. Um, you know, you look at Kelsey Brown and she does some things different than Darby does. Uh, Emma Ritter is not necessarily a vocal leader, but she does everything um, that a coach has asked her to do. So she leads by example. Uh, same with Addie Green, quiet kid, but, you know, just grinds and leads by example. And Cameron's the same way. And um, I think Bennett opens her mouth a little bit. Bailey does. Um, one kid that's really um, stepped up is Meredith, Meredith Slaw. I mean, she's a senior, uh, had a really good fall. If you were to ask me about her fall, I thought she was our most productive hitter um, this year. And uh, she's kind of um, a mother hen of the hitters where Keeley's the mother hen of the pitchers. Um, Mac is still around, Mac Larder. Um, so we have, we have a lot of kids that can fill a leadership role. I don't know if you have the alpha that just, you know, bites somebody's head off when there's something going wrong, but uh, I don't know that we, this team needs it. Uh, we're experienced. We, uh, we know what's expected of us. And uh, for the most part, they, they do the right thing mostly all the time. Of the new faces, who are some names that Hokie fans should kind of remember that you think could contribute to this team and, and is blending in with the veterans? Yeah, offensively, um, Brianna Peck is one. Uh, she's from Pennsylvania. Uh, major, major uh, power. Um, arguably the most power on our team right now. And uh, good arm, throws over overhand 70, good runner. Um, she's got a chance to, to play a lot. Um, Rachel Castine is a, is a freshman from, uh, from Virginia and uh, does a little bit of everything well. And I could put her at short. I could put her behind the plate. I could put her at third. I could put her at second. She knows how to play the game. She's savvy. Doesn't let the doesn't let the um, the lights get too bright for. Her. Uh, knows she belongs here, and uh, she's been fun to watch. Ari Wright is a a freshman from Georgia. Um, as much power, she's got as much power as Peck, um, but just like BP wise, the most power maybe I've ever coached. Just has tremendous bat speed. It's it's just. It's just fun, fun to watch her hit. Just swings really hard. Um, have another, um, Allison Carter's a good defensive outfielder. Her swing's coming along. She's, she, could, uh, she could get some innings this year too. So there's a talented bunch. They're, they're, they're good and they're meshing well. And um, yeah, they're, uh, I'm glad they're around. Is it the deepest team you've had since you've been there? I think so. Yeah, by far. I mean, it, it's, it's, the lineup is going to be hard to, uh, it's going to be hard to make this year which is a good problem. And, and my, uh, my thing I have to be cognizant of is I, I just got to define the roles for these kids. You know, they want to know what's expected of them. And if you're not playing, why am I not playing and how can I play? And that's, uh, I've kind of, I always say that I do that, but maybe I haven't done that as well as, as I should have in the past. So uh, we had end of the year meetings this year. I don't have our kids sit down for an hour and just quiz them 15 minutes, um, come in and out. Here's your role had a good fall. This is what you need to work on. Um, have a good break. See you later. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, and, and so uh, I need to be more, more aware of that because uh, communication part is, is big for athletes, not just female athletes, athletes in general, they want to know what's expected of them. And um, that's kind of what I need to hit home this year. You've challenged your team once again with the schedule. You've done that since you've arrived it, but this is taking it to a different level. You're going to open the season in Leesburg, where you're going to play Missouri, Kentucky, Wisconsin, among others. Northwestern is in that tournament. You're playing them. Uh, you're going to play uh, as well at the Bama Bash, where Alabama is the host in that tournament. You're playing at a South Carolina tournament. Uh, you know, you got you're going to UCF during the season. Uh, you're playing Liberty. You're playing Tennessee. I mean, I go on and on here. Uh, just talk about your your philosophy because the ACC, as we'll get into, is challenging enough. But you've taken it to a, a, a big uh, level there from a non-conference standpoint especially going on the road right uh you know that's you you mentioned all those teams and every time you say one of those names I think of a pitcher on their staff that's pretty good 
and you're going to ask other teams, the other coaches, and they're going to say Virginia Tech, or you're going to say Virginia Tech, they're going to say the same, think the same thing. You know, we've, we've got pitching. And if you have pitching, you can, you can try to navigate a schedule like we have. You know, so uh, I just felt like with the pitching that we have, let's just see what happens. You know, let's go out and play and, um, you know, it'll prepare us more for postseason, I think. And the ACC, like you said, it's, it's a lot better than, than when I arrived. So um, it's all about being prepared at the, you know, when it matters, which is middle of the season at the end. Let's talk about the ACC. Florida State was a win away from a national championship. You've got you were a win away from the World Series. You have teams like Notre Dame, a win away from the Super Regionals. They got arms with Holloway, Florida State, Sandercock, Clemson. Uh, I know in talking to Coach Rittman, they felt they should have hosted. They got a loaded roster. Cagle, it's a talented arm as well. Uh, we could go on and on about the ACC and the strength. Do you all feel you're getting the respect that the league deserves? I think the league is. I think the league is getting the respect that it deserves. Um, for us, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't really pay attention when people say there's been articles and we're, we're not even sniffing, you know, um, you know, the top three of the league. So uh, that's good. I, we'll still be under the radar and that's fine with me and that's fine with our kids. But as far as the league goes, I think we're getting, we're getting into the conversation of, um, of the upper tier uh, softball leagues. I agree. And I think one of these steps now, the next step for the ACC is being that multi-bid host conference, like other conferences. You, know, you mentioned you were right on the cusp of possibly hosting. Coach Gump felt you should have hosted. Felt Some people felt Clemson should have hosted. Duke, who won the ACC tournament, they got great arm, great team. They were a national seed, but they had to travel. Is that the next step for the league is to be that consistent hosting uh, multi, not just one or two schools, but you know, have three to four schools host from a conference. Yeah. And then it all goes to RPI. You know, if uh, I think if you're worthy RPI wise to host, you should host. And uh, for us, just speaking for, for our experience last year, um, we went into a lull where we lost, I think five in a row. And that, that crushed our, our hopes of coasting just did, you know, you, you can't do that if you want to host a regional or super. So um, I've got no problems with, um, where we were last year I don't know that I wanted to go to Arizona but <laughs> I think um, I think the league is getting um, that's the next step is is um, you know multiple hosting and um, I think we're close and there's a lot of you just look at our at the teams we got to play and it's like man there's no off weekends and so um, that's that's good for the league that's good that's uh, you know that's that's the way other schools and other other conferences roll so um Looking forward to it, and it's it, it's making everybody better. Uh, over the offseason, the NCAA passed the inst, uh, instant replay, where basically now conferences, schools can use instant replay. What has been the reaction from the league in that? Is that something the ACC might, is going to use? Uh, in time, I know the SEC is. What's kind of been the chatter on that? Not so sure. I, I think it's 50-50. Um, I, I'll just give you my opinion. I, I think we'll use it if we're able to. Um, that's the way the sport's going. So we'll, it's going to happen eventually. So if you, if you have the ability and cap, uh, capability to do it, uh, we're, we will. So um, still in the process of that. But I think, you know, when, when, when big rule changes happen like that, uh, you, you can either catch up or you get left behind. And I think, um, I think it's just advantageous for everybody to at least think about it if you're able to couple last things I want to talk to you about the state of Virginia and I, I uh, the, 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 the really the, the, the talent that the state has in softball at all levels obviously your success that you're building there James Madison the run they had Liberty and the job coach Richardson's done at Liberty among others programs in the state of Virginia but you even go down to Division three Virginia Wesleyan winning the national title with, with the bill the program that built Brandon Elliott's built there what is it about that state? that where everybody could be successful and, and have talent at all levels? Good question. I, yeah, there's a lot of pitching in our state, <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. It's kind of a microcosm of what we're doing. If you have good pitching that allows you to play in better tournaments and that allows you to play, um, you know, just get better competition when you're growing up. And so um, just from a couple of the programs that we were, have been getting kids from, I mean, they play all over the place. You know, it's not just playing at the beach. They're going to Chattanooga and they're going to Atlanta and they're going to Arizona and they're going to PGF. 
it's not just um, you know just staying local. So I, I think it's that. I, it, there's, but it's a good question. I mean, there's a lot of talent here. Um, and fortunate for us, a lot of kids grow up being Virginia Tech fans. So um, it's not an easy uh, recruiting recruiting spiel by any means. But if a kid grows up in their favorite school from five years old is Virginia Tech, and we're fortunate enough to be pretty good, and we, we have a chance at those kids. So um, I had recruited Virginia a little bit when I was at Mizzou, but um, you know, being here, there's a lot more talent than than people re realize. So that was that something you found out as you once you got there and you started recruiting. You're like, wow, uh, we've we've got like a gold mine here, more than I expected. Yeah, just uh, just there's a lot of good programs here, and so you don't ever want to pigeonhole yourself and just recruiting one of those programs. We uh, we were fortunate with this freshman class where um, we got some some good freshmen from many different travel teams in the state. So that's that's a big deal for me is uh, if you want to come to Virginia Tech and, and this is your dream school and you're good enough to play here, I'm going to watch you and I'm going to try to get you. And so if, you're, if your dream school is not VT and you're in Virginia, that's fine too. It's, there's, there's plenty of good kids, but um, we're just, like I said, we're just fortunate that it's a good, good place to go to school. Uh, it's a good town to live in. And uh, a lot of kids want to come here. Last thing, obviously, you mentioned now you're going to be away with your team for the next month. You'll, re, you know, obviously rejoin in January, and then the season will start. You'll start the season in Leesburg, as we talked about. What are going to be some of the keys for your players to accomplish here, their goals? What are some of the things they got to do? Oh, uh, it's simple for us. Come back in uh, the softball shape that you're in right now. That's it. So, um, we don't have time to catch you back up and, and, and I'm really, and I think you've known me long enough. I'm, I, I don't want to waste time. I don't like, um, I don't like wasting uh, energy. And I tell the players that if you come back, not in the same softball shape, softball shape that you're in now, you might as well not even lift in the fall. It's not, you, you just lost it all, you know? So um, take pride in what you did in the weight room this fall because they, they killed it in the weight room They're, They look, they look great. Um, and so right now, since there's a lot of intrinsic motivation right now for the kids. And so you have to be motivated to um, come back in shape that you're in right now. And it's not, uh, you know, it's just softball shape, be ready to play. So you don't get hurt when you come back. How's the balancing act of being a college coach and a dad? Oh, it's, uh, it's balancing for sure. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I'm, I'm able to compartmentalize. I think uh, we practice in the mornings. I go home around four or five o'clock and um, change my first diaper. And <laughs> uh, but it, it's good. I it's just uh, it's just a different experience. It changes you. A lot of people told me it would, um, but it just makes you it makes you appreciate your life a little bit more. Um, it makes you appreciate the day to day things more. Uh, not looking ahead. I never look ahead anyway, but, um, you know, my son is, he's almost seven months and you see pictures on your phone of when he was born and now he's weighing 22, 23 pounds. And you're like, where did that go? <laughs> and I, and it just makes me think, uh, you know, today I'll go and I'll play with him and be like, man, in, in 15 years, I'm not going to do this anymore. You know? So it makes you appreciate uh the time that you get to spend in them in the moment that's remarkable man congrats on that i know it was kind of unique it was all that came out during the postseason run but uh what a, it was something you'll you'll never forget and uh it's awesome that you get to enjoy that as well as the success uh as a coach uh i appreciate you taking the time uh from doing this and uh, like i said i always appreciate your uh your friendship and your you know coming on the show and uh i'll definitely see you during the season thanks for coming on you got it eric looking forward to seeing you